I'm Dr. Mark Gordon, and with me today is the lovely Dr. Kathy Malthorn, and we're going to be talking about probably one of the most important topics on human sexuality. You ready, Kathy? I'm ready. Okay. First question. What do you see as the primary cause for men having sexual dysfunction? Testosterone is the hormone that basically runs everything for men, and it is the primary reason men lose their sexuality when it drops with age. The second function, or the second problem, is blood flow. So blood flow, as you hear on all the commercials, blood flow and testosterone are two causes of uh, ED and ejaculatory dysfunction, all kinds of, every function of sex for men. Understood. So what are the key laboratory tests that you might run on a male to determine whether or not they have testosterone deficiency or other hormone deficiencies that influence human sexuality? I run a total testosterone to see if they're producing testo testosterone. That doesn't tell me how they feel. Then I run a testosterone free or free testosterone and that is parallel to their symptoms. It's what is causing them to have uh, either low symptoms or normal symptoms. If they have a normal free testosterone, generally they don't need testosterone. There's another social or emotional problem. I also order estrone and estradiol to estrogens. If they're high, they can decrease the available testosterone for a man, and they can cause other things like belly fat, man boobs, and, but most importantly, they lower the testosterone. I also look at a prolactin to make sure there's no prolactin uh, a stimulating tumor that causes, uh, it's, it's the hormone of uh, breastfeeding, but men have it as well. And we look at that to make sure that it's not high and we're not misdiagnosing, but also that the testosterone uh, deficiency is real. Okay, so you look at prolactin to verify that prolactin is not causing a loss of luteinizing hormone, which leads to testosterone deficiency. That's Understood. right, and I check LH and FSH as well Wonderful. to see if, they're not, if they are without hormones. So you also mentioned about uh, vascular flow. Yes. So can you tell us a little bit about vascular flow as well as what uh, technology you use to determine whether or not there's impediment to flow? The vascular flow basically has to do with um, whether you can bring blood flow to the pelvis, whether your vessels dilate, uh, your arteries have to be able to dilate. They can't have a lot of plaque in them. And they, as men get older and women get older, they don't dilate as easily. So we know that if we treat with testosterone, I honestly, this is how I test it. I treat with testosterone and I see if all of the erectile function has come back. And if it has not, then I add something like, <clears throat> like a, um, a Cialis, a Viagra, a daily uh, blood flow stimulator that's what it is. And then I can tell that the blood flow is coming back. But I also check their heart because their heart will um, show me whether they have plaque. So I do a CA or a calcium, um, a cardiac calcium scan. And then I can tell if they have plaque because if they have plaque in their heart, they've got plaque in their pelvis and I need to get them to a cardiologist as well. Understood. Are there any direct measurements that can be done uh, to determine penile blood flow? There are direct measurements. I don't necessarily use them. I usually send them to the urologist to, to see whether their blood flow is actually, I mean, you can probably tell me. I don't use that because usually I don't need to. Well, I'll be perfectly honest yeah. with you. I'm not in this venue I know. of human sexuality. <laughs> I know that, but I mean, this is something that I, I rarely, because I treat with testosterone pellets, right. my patients are better. And when I add the Cialis, they're completely better. So I don't have to do that unless They've had a uh, prostate surgery, and then I send them to their urologist for evaluation. Out of curiosity, are there specific cardiac medications that might influence libido? There are, yes, beta blockers and, a, and um, ACE inhibitors, which are uh, blood pressure medications, right. uh, can decrease libido and uh, erectile function. Understood. What about psychotropic medications? Yeah, psycho psychotropic medications um, are one of the things that I have to adjust uh, if I am stumped. I can't get this, the libido back. I have to adjust those or I have to talk to the psychiatrist that wrote them and change them to something different because they are very difficult to work with. Okay. 
So in summation, what you do is you check their testosterone levels, make sure their free testosterone levels are optimized by giving them uh, testosterone. Is that testosterone topical or is that testosterone injectable? I use testosterone pellets and it's very effective for me. I've used the other types of testosterone and I, I haven't had as uh, robust uh, a um, affirming uh, re uh, response from my patients. They love pellets because they don't have to think about it. They get, men get pellets about every six months. They come in, we give them enough testosterone for a six month dose in their hip or in their love handles. And then they don't think about it again. Mm -hmm. I also know that also helps me to know if they are actually taking their testosterone. And, and then when they give me um, symptoms, I, ha I know whether the symptoms are from low testosterone or if they just didn't take it. Is my, is my treatment working? Understood. Uh, there's new peptide that's come onto the market, which is called PT-141. Um, can you tell us anything about that? It's, a, um, it, it's really nice for my patients who don't quite get their, all of their libido back or all of their sexual function back with the first two methods. And it is uh, bromelain. It's, it's a uh, byproduct uh, or a um, segment of, melanos, of melanotocin. Mm -hmm. and so it is one of the hormones, part of one of the hormones that gives us a tan, but it also stimulates our sex drive and our sexual function. So we use that, it's a, it's a shot or it is a nasal spray. We use it when everything else has not brought people up to optimum, because I'm trying to get people back to complete normal, not to halfway, halfway there. But it's very valuable and no one has stopped taking it once they started. My patients love it. Uh, another question is, are there any social habits, uh, lifestyle habits, that can negatively impact uh, sexuality? Yes. Obesity really negatively, sec uh, negatively affects sexuality because uh, fat makes estrogen. Estrogen then uh, counteracts the free testosterone. So obesity is a big problem. It also is a sign of insulin resistance. And insulin resistance is, uh, is what leads to diabetes, and it also affects sexual function. So that plus alcohol plus <laughs> exercising too much. If you exercise too much, I mean exercise usually increases testosterone, but if you exercise too much, you're dehydrated, you've used up all of your, uh, all of your um, calories exercising, you can't come home and have sex. So I, that plus uh, diet pills or anything that has a stimulant in them, those pills actually cause your vessels to shrink and then you can't get blood into the penis. So I've had people who have called me and said, I've been drinking on a plane, which makes them dehydrated, right. and um, I got to Vegas and I drank some more and then I hadn't drink, drunk any water all day and then I went upstairs and I couldn't have sex. What's, I mean, it was an emergency phone call. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, well, tomorrow you're going to hydrate and, right. you know, you already have your testosterone. You already have your Cialis. You could double that. I'm not sure that's going to work unless you fill your tank up with water and stop right. drinking for a while. Right. Very good. So in closing, is there any uh, message that you'd like to give out to uh, males that are watching this so they can self-assess to know whether or not they're leading down the pathway to eventually have uh, dysfunction, sexual dysfunction? One of the first things that will happen to you is that you will lose your morning erections. That is the first sign to me and to most men, they say, oh, I'm not normal, and tr that's right. It's, that's the first thing that happens when your testosterone, free testosterone starts dropping. So when that starts to happen, that's when you should seek help from a doctor who actually specializes in treating men with testosterone and other methods to keep them from going into a, a I mean, I'm, we're all preventive. We're trying to keep people from having ED. We're trying to keep people from having vascular disease. If you catch it then, we can bring you back to normal without leading, letting you go into the abyss and get heart disease and have really bad sexual dysfunction that we can't co fix completely. We need to get you early. If we didn't get you early, that's fine. I take care of a lot of people who are over 70. And we can bring you back to a very happy level. 
But catching it early and changing your lifestyle, diet, exercise, uh, decrease diet pills, decrease smoking or stop smoking, all of those things are negative to your sex drive. Don't take drugs. Cocaine is really bad. And eventually, it will keep uh, you from having an erection. At first, you think you're OK, but you're not. Uh, so all of these things are negative, And these are things that Americans do. So you have to look at your life, reassess it, change everything so that you are healthy. And you will have, you'll have your erectile function, your libido, and your ejaculatory function for a much longer time. And you won't have, have to go to the doctor all the time. I mean, you can prevent this if you're healthy. Wonderful. Thank you. Kathy Maupin, thank you very much. This is Dr. Mark Gordon signing out. Thank you.